Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Will the meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission for Wednesday, November 1st, 2017, please come to order. I'd like to start off the meeting by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd like to join me, please stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. So, for the benefit of those who may or may not have participated in a Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, our procedures are as follows. We will read the legal call of the meeting as published in local newspapers. The applicant will be invited to come forward and present the case, explaining to the Commission and others present what is being requested of the property. Comments of town agencies will be read for each application, if there are any. There will be clarifying questions from the Commissioners, then there will be an opportunity for clarifying questions from the audience. First, those who wish to support the application may come forward, and second, those who oppose the application will be invited to come forward and express their opinion. As this is a public hearing, it must be recorded. It's necessary for all speakers to identify themselves by stating their name and address before addressing the commission. The applicant is then free to leave or remain for the balance of the public hearing in the regular meeting, at which the time the commission will try to reach a decision on each application. Each applicant will be notified in writing as to the decision of this commission and has the right to appeal in superior court if desired. The decisions of this meeting are available the day after the meeting by calling the Planning and Zoning Office at 453-8039 after 9 a.m. So seated this evening are the following Planning and Zoning members. We have Matt Yorzinski, we have Rich Meyer, Alan Brown, there's Josh Hirschman, I'm Frank D'Andrea, and we have Dick Wallace. We have some staff here tonight. We have Reggie Reed and George Crawl, and we have our recording secretary, Lisa Piambino, and the videographer this evening, as always, is Peter Schultz. Will the secretary please read the legal notice? The notice is hereby given that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on November 1st, 2017 at 7.30 p.m. at Nathaniel B. Green Community Center, 32 Church Street, Guilford, Connecticut, in the Monongatuck Room on the second floor for the following purposes. John Tarutis, 52 Seaside Avenue, Map 29, Lot 114, Zone R3, Coastal Area Management for Removal of existing shed and replacing with a 10 by 14 shed for section 273-91. Ocean Co. 485, Whitfield Street, Map 2, Lot 9, Zone R3, Coastal Area Management, placement of 125.1 cubic yards of soil over an area of 6,029 square feet to replace soil eroded by tidal water, section 273-91. Copies of these applications are available for inspection at the Office of the Planning and Zoning Commission, Town Hall South, 50 Boston Street, Guilford, Connecticut. At this hearing, persons may attend and be heard and written communication will be received. Dated at Guilford, Connecticut, this 10th day of October, Frank D'Andrea, Chairman. Thank you. So I'd like to open up the meeting. Our first uh, on the public hearing agenda excuse me, is uh, Brian Bogowski. For 2641, I believe this is your second public hearing, so yep. should be set. Anything change from last time? It's no. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yep. You guys got any questions? We went over this pretty good last time. I think everybody was here. All right. Is there any um, questions from the audience? Is there any comments? Anybody would like to speak in favor? Anybody would like to speak against? Okay. I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good day. Okay, next on is Ocean Co. 485 Whitfield Street. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Westermeyer with Coastline Consulting and Development. We are located in Brantford, Connecticut, and we prepared the application on behalf of Ocean Co. The application is to uh, retain approximately 6.4 cubic yards of fill that was placed prior to getting town authorization and to place an additional 125.1 cubic yards of fill over an area 
of six, uh, roughly 6,029 square feet. Uh, the purpose of the proposal is to raise the elevation of this portion of the lawn that's become eroded as tidal water has been able to permeate through the bulkhead and it's led to gradual erosion and loss of upland in that area to just to reestablish a, a permanent lawn. All right, uh, there's a letter here from Kevin McGee. There's a few. I'm going to read this into the record. Did you receive it today? Or do you yes. know about uh, it? I was handed, Mr. Crowell handed it Perfect. to me. Perfect. Yep. All right. Uh, this application is for, re this application is regarding, it's for regrading and filling of the eastern portion of the property. A section of the property being filled is below the coastal jurisdiction line, but is located behind stone bulkhead with the top of, of wall elevation greater than coastal jurisdiction elevation. Coastline consulting and development reviewed the adverse impacts to the natural resources on site and determined that no tidal wetland vegetation or other coastal resources exist between the existing stone bulkhead and the coastal, jur coastal jurisdiction <coughs> line elevation 4.0 and AVD 88, with the exception of being a coastal hazard zone being in a coastal hazard zones, AE elevation 12, and wave action zone elevation 13. As part of the coastal area management application, the, co uh, the consultant has provided a detailed description on the potential impact to the coastal resources and how they are being mitigated. The application also contains a description of the construction methodology and sedimentation and erosion control measures to be utilized for the project. The plans call for the existing bulkhead to be used as an erosion control measure after site grading, a portion of the wall would only be approximately three inches above grade. The area of filling located between the mean high water line and the coastal jurisdiction line, elevation 4.0 and AVD 88, is in, uh, is in area of combined jurisdiction with Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Any work conducted below coastal jurisdiction line also requires a permit from Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, CTDEP, and Army Corps of Engineer. In order to make sure the coastal resources are protected during the construction process, I recommend the following conditions of approval. The only condition from Kevin is one silt fence should be installed adjacent to the stone bulkhead following the installation of stone and prior to the site grading and filling. Do you have a problem with that condition? No, we don't. And then there's another letter that I'll read. Uh, this is from Dennis Johnson, um, the health director. And it says, the applicant's proposed fill placement activity in the coastal management zone will occur over a portion of the septic system serving the dwelling. It is possible to fill over a septic without creating damage. However, it is not recommended that soil be stockpiled over the leaching area as proposed in the applicant's site plan. It is recommended that the applicant uh, depict the the as-built location of the septic system on the site plan to serve as a guide to the excavation contractor in avoiding leaching field damage. In addition, the location of the soil stockpile number two should be moved further south so as not to cause damage to the leaching fields. It is recommended that application to propose CAM site plan be approved with these further con uh, changes to the project construction uh, sequence detail. Do you have a problem with those changes? No, we can relocate the stockpile areas, and um, I'm sure we can find uh, a survey or something that shows the location of the, the leaching leaching field. Field. Before, yeah, before you, you got the. No, this is this is Szymanski. Yeah, I've got a question. Sure. So, um, did you say 125 yards of fill? 125 cubic yards total. Yes. Cubic yards. Yep. And um, so, I, I, I believe that a cubic yard weighs about 2,500 pounds, give or take a couple hundred pounds, and you have 125 of them going there. Do you have an engineering study on that wall to see if it'll retain the extra 350,000 pounds of soil? Not a study. We did consult with an engineer if there was any the, concerns. Can I, can I see it? Um, there's no written documentation from oh. the engineer. It was just, so, it was just a discussion. We, we sat down with an engineer just to look at the site and the proposal. And he indicated that there sh he indicated there shouldn't be a concern because it isn't all it isn't all placed against the bulkhead. It's spread further Lambert as well. So I'd like to see that in writing before I would approve it. Um, you know, um, that's an awful lot of soil, and that's an awful old wall. Um, do you have any idea how old that wall is? We know the wall predates 1934. Predates 1934. Yeah, but and you're going to add an additional 350,000 pounds of soil behind it. 
not entirely behind it. It does go further landward, and the, the engineer recommended the inclusion of the stone curtain as additional structural support for the wall itself um, in consideration that it would be fill placed in the area. So is that stone curtain near the wall? It abuts, it abuts the landward face of the wall, yes. So that's in the coastal jurisdiction line. Do you have the state approval yet? We do not have we do not state approval because we had to get town approval first based on a deadline to submit a CAM application to satisfy so, so, the CAM. So with all due respect, sir, um, there's a gentleman, Kevin Zawoy, who has made a statement that usually the town requires state approval before local approval is made. And this is on his, uh, he's with the DEEP, yes, office of the Long Island Sound. Yes, I know Kevin. So he made a statement that usually the town or city requires state approval before the local approval is made. Right here. What do you have to say about that? I have to say that that isn't Kevin's decision as to whether an application, as to what the phasing of an application. The applicant is in a consent order with the state to get state approval. However, in discussions with Reggie Reed, given the fact that there was a, a violation on site for the placement of the 6.4 cubic yards of fill, we needed to submit a town application by September 28th, I believe it was. We couldn't have a, a local application in place beforehand. Uh, we couldn't have a state application done because it does require a bit more uh, consultation. That, I think that that order is an error. Um, you know, I, I understand Ms. Reed said that. I understand you believe that. However, um, you know, this gentleman is with the Office of the Long Island Sound, the Department of Environmental Protection, and while we do uh, help local zoning code that we help interpret and enforce. We also uh, have to heed the state here. Um, well, so, respect, though, hold, it, isn't a, it isn't a requirement. Hold, hold that, and, and we'll come back to your thought. Let, okay. I'll let him go. read the um, no. Let him read the uh, letter from from the uh, DEP because there is one in the file. Do you have that one? This one is dated October twelfth, two thousand seventeen, from Carol Szymanski, environmental analyst. Stage two, Office of Long Island Sound Protection. It's sent to uh, Kevin McGee, 50 Boston Street, Guilford, Connecticut. Reason, coastal site plan review for to allow retention of fill in the flood zone AE2 and VE13 at 485 Whitfield Street, Ocean Co-op applicant. Dear commissioners, thank you for referring this coastal site plan review request received on October 2nd, 2017 for us to review and comment. Project description, the applicant is requesting to retain 125 cubic yards of fill already placed in two flood zones, AE12 and VE13, and below the coastal jurisdictional line, CJL, on a 7.75 acre site. Additionally, the applicant proposes to excavate soil with high salinity and replace it with soils that can support a lawn. CJL is approximately 60 feet from the house. The town's authority extends to the mean high water line. Any work done below the CJL must receive a permit from the DEEP and Land, land and Water Resources Division. The commission should weigh the reasons for establishing a lawn with the reasons for preserving the flood zones which prevent flooding on neighborhood upland sites. With this filing operation cause, will this filling operation cause others in the area to fill zones, to fulfill their properties as well? Coastal resources present present on or near the site include coastal hazard area, AE12 and VE13, and tidal wetlands. Site plan deficiencies. What is the ultimate purpose of the fill? In the future, no buildings could be constructed on the fill without meeting FEMA standards in the V-zone. No state permits for structures, dredging, and fill permit have been filed as of this writing. It is unclear what the address of this property is. Old Whitfield Street is referenced in the aerial photo on the site plan, and 485 Whitfield Street is referenced in the site plan title block. The tidal wetlands on the site should be flagged to determine their precise location. 
In conclusion, we hope these comments are helpful to the Commission pursuant to the Connecticut General Statute, Section 22A-110. We request that these comments be read into the record at the public hearing of this application. If we can be of further assistance to you and any other coastal man management or Long Island Sound related matters, please feel free to contact me at 860-424-3138. Thank you, sir. Okay. There seems to be some confusion over the uh, way it was presented to them. Uh, the aerial photos, they're not sure of the addresses, et cetera. Uh, the title block clearly states the address. The application form clearly states the address. Um, I can't speak as to why Ms. Zemanski was confused by it, but it's very clear in the application materials that the site address is 485 Whitfield Street and the applicant's mailing address is 530 Whitfield Street. Whitfield Street on the other, and that might no, be No, it's just the, 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 the aerial here. image has yeah. Old Whitfield on it because that's what was on the Google Earth image. But the title block clearly states 485 Whitfield Street, did and every, all the application materials do as well. Did you receive this? I did. Okay. Did you reach out to Carol to try to? We tried. We also talked to Kevin okay, McGee. So, what did Carol say when you reached out to her? We didn't have an answer from Carol on those particular well, items. What, did you at least try to clear up like where the property is? Would she consent to see to you that you? accurately showed her where the property was? We tried. We called, we, and we also, I also followed up with Kevin and gave him the same information to relate to Carol if he was unable to. I, I never spoke to Carol oh, directly I about, to out. we so, tried to. So you, you reached out to her and you weren't able to get a hold of her? Okay. Yes. And there's one more letter that I want to read into the record. This is from the citizen? Yeah, this is from, um, I don't, you probably haven't received this yet. Yeah, why don't we, why don't we wait until let to finish the presentation then we'll do it with the, uh, because there's some questions in there. Yeah. So why don't we wait, wait on that sure. one? But yes, I want it read, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Copy of that letter. Well, we're going to read it anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> so just to review, you, you have some sort of engineer review of the wall, but it's nothing that we could see. Is it a certified engineer or is it just someone who knows? Professional engineer. Professional engineer. So, so we could see a report of that? Of Maybe the, if, we, if, if it's yeah. necessary, but it, like I said, if it was. He hasn't gone out and done a true analysis, so it would it would not be. It was just simply a. I went to his office, presented the, the general concept to him, just explained to him the age of the bulkhead and things of that nature. So he just, based on basic information, gave us some rough guidance as how best to address the issue with the fill. Really? Yes. Um, okay. Can, can you tell me exactly what the adverse impact is of the adding the fill on the site? There are no. Tidal wetland vegetation or any other coastal resources besides a coastal hazard area in this area. So the only potential adverse impact would be if there was the potential for flood water to or storm water to be redirected onto adjacent properties. That would be the potential adverse impact. Um, but we've addressed that by in doing topographic survey work around the entire area. And we can ensure that even with the placement of the fill, this area is still lower than the surrounding areas, so it won't have the potential to redirect the flood water. So what is the proposed activity? The proposal is to place the fill and grade it as shown on the plans from elevation 5 down to elevation 4-4. Four, four. And what, what is the ultimate end goal? I mean, is this to protect the area resources, or is it to... No, it's, it's, to it's to prevent further erosion of the lawn by raising the elevation behind the wall to above the CJL because currently water can pass through the, the bulkhead at elevation four. So the idea is to raise the elevation enough so that it is under that influence anymore so there isn't a continued loss of upland behind it, which will, you know, the, the gradual erosion of upland behind it causes sedimentation into the tidal wetland vegetation, which could have an adverse impact. So that would also have the benefit of pre preventing that impact from happening. All right, so where we're to about the relationship between granting the coastal site plan application and the DEP approval. No further work can proceed until both of those applications are approved. Uh, so the fact that if the Planning and Zoning Commission were to approve this coastal site plan that does not authorize any, can, any uh, implementation of this project can only be implemented once the DEP permit is granted. We've done that before where we granted uh, applications before DEP have checked off on it. So I, I looked, I didn't see any. 
I'm not yeah, aware. I don't know that. I, I don't know that. I, I, don't, I mean, I recall. And, and, and also, let me ask you while we're talking about this, this work has already commenced, hasn't it? No. What? They did place 6.4 cubic yards of material in the corner, and they were issued a stop work order. So, so what we've been asked to do, or required to do, is put together an application to allow them to retain that material and, in addition, place the additional material. So and no that, work is currently occurring. In, in an earlier agreement with the owner of that property, they agreed not to do any further work in there. That was, have, I, I don't know specifically what agreement you're talking about. We've only become involved in this once they were cited for placing the initial amount of fill. And they've done no work since then. They've stopped work in accordance with the letter that they received from Ms. Reed. Do you, you have anything else for your presentation? I'm, not, I'm just ready to answer well, questions. I have one more question. I want and to, I want you to read that letter yeah. too, please. Um, can you just tell me if we were to deny this application, in your opinion, would the adverse impact be greater than uh, or less than uh, if we were to approve the application on the site or for the surrounding area? What would like to continue to happen is we'd have a continued loss of material on the landward side of the bulkhead that can make its way into the wetlands, which could create elevation changes that could allow phragmites or other undesirable species to grow within that area. So there could be degradation of the marsh if there isn't something done to address the loss of fill behind the bulkhead. Um, how, how, would that, how would that happen? Would it wash over the wall? It would actually wash through the wall. The same way the water is coming in, it's so coming would, in through... Would not add more, adding more soil on that side of the wall increase the likelihood that it'll wash into the wetlands? No, because that's part of the portion, the part of the, the reason for the, the stone uh, barrier here is to trap, is to prevent the removal of fine sediment to, you know... How, how will the stone do that? Well, one, it attenuates any of the tidal water that comes through, so the forces are less, and it... it the intent is to allow it to trap as much sediment as it can before that sediment can reach its way through the bulkhead. Are you putting a biosediment filter cloth there to retain the sediment on the landward there, side, or what are you doing? There's, it's wrapped in filter fabric, okay. so very, very tight filter fabric, which will act as another barrier. So that's, that's the intent. That's how we would address that concern. Did you hear some questions in here? Yeah, then? that could be answered. Okay, this is from Lori Des Desmond. She's at 34 Seaside Ave. She says that I'm unable to attend the planning and zoning meeting on November 1st, uh, but will watch on GCTV. I ask you to please read this letter into the record and consider this feedback in your deliberations. My name is Lori Desmond, and I reside at 34C Site Ave. The rear of my property abuts 485 Whitfield Street. The letter I received regarding the PNZ request refers to retaining uh, 635.5 square feet of existing soil and placing 6,029 square feet of additional soil. Question number one, please provide information on the proposal in cubic feet or yards as that seems more appropriate to assess the mitigation of the application, magnitude, excuse me, of the application. For example, 60 feet by 100 feet or 6,000 square feet of two inches in depth is very different than the same square feet at 12 inches in depth. Can you do that or? Yep, well, okay. we provided the uh, volume of materials. Oh, the volume of materials. Yep. Okay, great. And then qu the second question she asked was, what is the impact of the additional fill now and in the future with rising sea levels as the water uh, will then flow elsewhere? How can we be assured that this will not redirect the water to neighboring properties. I regularly have overflow on the marsh onto my lawn and would not want this to increase. So is this gonna increase the overflow of the water into neighboring properties? Well, we address that in two different ways. One is, again, as I said before, the topography on each side of the area where the fill will be placed is still considerably higher than what the elevation of the area would be post filling. So this will still be the low point on this property. So water once it's in this area, it won't be redirected east or west. Um, with respect to um, the Desmond property, which I believe is south and sort of near the western edge of the marsh, the primary concern for that property would be if filling were to occur, water would the bulkhead into the marsh because that would start to prevent further upland movement of tidal or flood water and automatically redirect water back toward those properties. But in this case, there's no filling occurring on the waterward side of the bulkhead. In addition, um, 
because the fill will still be lower than the top elevation of the bulkhead, any flood water that could overtop the bulkhead will still continue to flow further landward rather than be blocked and redirected. And then she has a third question. It is my understanding that the applicant had previously already begun to bring fill on the property without a permit. If true, this would appear to continue a pattern of violations over the past couple of years. Is there a penalty, and what can be done to prevent this in the future? That's not correct. I, yeah, I, yes. no, well, I guess, Reggie, would you like to answer that question? Yeah. Um, if you read the I'll read it again. NOV that I sent them, oh, okay, yeah. uh, the cease and desist, it, it, it said they had to submit an application, or I'd start fining them up to $150 a day. All right, and then finally she says, pending answers to the above questions and an assurance that it will not negatively impact my property, I am opposed to the approval of the coastal site plan. Thank you, Lori Desmond. So I've got a question for you. Currently, and it may not be what the property owner wants, but that corner of the property acts more like a retention basin by keeping some of the water there during a flood. By filling it with soil, will you not be removing the ability for it to act as a retention basin? No, again, because it's still the low point right, on but, the but surrounding area. Right, but it fills areas. up with water. I, I agree with you, but if you fill the bottom of a glass with dirt and then pour water in, it'll hold a lot less water once it's halfway filled with dirt. So you're filling the bottom of what is actually a retention basin with soil. It just stands to reason that it will hold that much less water. Um, will that even though it's lower than everything else, by nature of the fact that you're filling in this, this area that holds water with dirt, won't that send that water out to other places? Only if it really if it exceeds the, yeah, the, I'm the saying, volume capacity, I, would be, which yes. is certainly possible. I don't know what the volume of that would be. That would have to be quite, an, quite an extreme event. We're, we're replacing this soil because that happened, though, right? No, we're replacing it because tidal water came through and started to cause erosion of the the waterward portion of the lawn. If, um, if you're replacing this, or you're placing this soil in there because of the erosion, what's to stop it from happening again? Have you planned something in there where, I mean, you're not building any walls and you're just going to take and fill soil that's been eroded, wouldn't it? Uh, erode again? Well, again, that's... So one of the primary purposes of the stone, crushed stone uh, curtain, if you will, um, that will, and it's wrapped in filter fabric, so very, with very fine pores, so it will trap fine sediments before they're able to make their way back out of the bulkhead again. That's part of the reason, that's the primary reason for this crushed stone entrenchment. So I've got a question for you. The filter fabric does its work and, and traps the fines. Will that not impede water flow through that area? In other words, like every filter that ever has existed, like the air filters on this room, they, they, they filter better as they get dirtier. Um, and they trap, and then eventually you have to clean the filter because nothing else goes through it. So over a short period of time, if this does trap the fines that are washing out of the soil, will it not really cause no other water to drain through there because it's going to block access? What are there, drain holes in the bottom of this wall? or what, Where is it coming out of? Um, well, What's happening kind of in this area of the wall is that chinking stones or mortar, whatever was used to, to join where the, where the stones were placed, have become dislodged or has worn away. So, so if that's true, and that's really what I was hoping you were going to say, how safe is this wall to put thousands, hundreds of thousands of soil behind if the mortar that's holding the stones together, by your own admission, is breaking out? And you, you said you, you spoke with the engineer, but no how one's actually looked at the wall. Roughly, where we're putting this soil, because we want to get more of an accurate picture than just hundreds of thousands of pounds in a five foot area. Sure. Uh, that's a 20 scale. Uh, so, this, oh, I don't have a scale with me, I apologize, but you're looking at maybe 90 to 100 feet in this section. Based and on it's going to be spread out over that whole area. It'll be spread out in this whole gray area, so not, not, it's not all concentrated at the front of the bulkhead, right. it moves all the way back to. The, the roadside. And I see where you're going with it, but I just want to make sure everybody's clear that this isn't, right, I, it is that, spread out. I get you that, keep harping on that one thing. If the wall is deteriorating already and we say yes, and it all washes out into the sound during the next heavy flood event, that's kind of on us. And I don't want it to be on us. That's why I want to see an engineer's report that says that even though the mortar's washing out and 
the walls compromised, it's still going to be okay to retain this. At the very least, even if he's doing nothing, I, if I owned the property, I would want the wall to be solid. Well, the wall has existed since pre-34 without failure. Um, so... All things fail over time. Um, certainly, but... I'm just trying to visualize this first stone barrier. Sure. How deep, how high is that going to be to the, what, the existing part this of the is, wall? The, it will be, it will have a, a top elevation of elevation 4.4. So it would be on the landward side of the wall. It would be a couple of inches below the top of the wall. And it, the re engineer's recommendation is to dig down until you find the footing. And that will be the depth. We don't know the exact depth because we haven't gone out and done exploratory borings to find the footing. But the recommendation is to have the base of the trench match the footing of the wall. And you're not going to put any wires or anything down there to hold that in, are you? No, it will be... Uh, there'll be excavation, wall. right, there'll be excavation, then they'll place uh, the geotextile filter fabric, then they'll place the stone, and then bring the filter fabric to the back side of the trench. Okay. Jordan, I do have a question for you. You know, kind of on where Rich was kind of going with this with the, with the engineer, I mean, it seems like something like this should probably have some type of engineer look at it and something for us, not to mention all of the questions that Carol has. Maybe we should have more information from her. Is there any way that we can have Carol and Kevin like combine some sort of conversation and, and bring the uh, consultant in to give us exactly what's going on? Because I feel like Kevin seems like he's okay with it. Carol seems like she doesn't know what's going on. And I just think that we should all be on the same page. It, I mean, do you have a problem with that, trying to figure out from, from Carol what's going on? Because even you said you can't get a hold of her. Well, I heard two things. One is requesting perhaps that the applicant's engineer submit some kind of written doc written or further documentation as to the views and the analysis that he's done according to uh, this gentleman. And then the second is that you are requesting that Carol kind of clarify what her view of this actually is since she doesn't really state any opinion here. Exactly. She seems uh, to be almost in the dark a little bit. Here. She, she's, she's asking if what's the benefit. I, I would ask one other thing. If you're, if, and obviously we're going to have staff interacting with people. Could you speak with this gentleman, Kevin Zavoy, who works for the Office Zavoy. of the Long Zavoy. Could you speak to him and, and illuminate us as to whether the town should require state approval before the local approval is made. What does that statement actually mean? Richard, where are you reading that from? And is that in the record? I mean, it should be. It's not. Uh, it, it was here. I can, I can put it in the record. It's an email chain. From, I mean, I just want to make sure that every, yeah, I don't have complete either. application. Is. Where did okay. that come from? It, it was here. So usually the town requires state approval. I'll, I'll be happy to enter it no, into the record. No, that's fine. Yeah, just uh, because, you know, we have to have everything. Right. But I, I would like to, to interact with Kevin Zawai, or whatever his name is. I'm saying his name wrong. Zawai. Yeah. And, and find out why he's saying that it should be, they should be first. That's all. Um, yeah, that's, that's fine. Because I, I still think, like I said, I'd like to. Uh, One thing you could do is continue this hearing to the next meeting. We'll, we'll ask Kevin. He's sort of our primary contact with DEP. Ask him to try to reach out to Carol and also to this other gentleman and maybe get some kind of more concrete opinion or whatever with regard to this application. And also ask the applicant to have, his have the engineer further report to us in whatever form you want, either come here or do some kind of letter to the commission along the line to address the questions that were perhaps asked. Is that a requirement? Well, what, I mean, I have to ask the commission. You made it seem like uh, it's not a big deal in terms of the engineer. Is 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 it a big deal that? No, no. I I just didn't. It hadn't been made a requirement in, in terms of us preparing this application. So I was just curious if it is going to be, you know, be required. Requirement, but <clears throat> yeah, I guess that you probably you don't need to supply us with that, but it might make us determining the status of the application easier. I think we should have an engineer verify that this, this wall is going gonna, is, is gonna to stand. Once you put this soil in there, that we're not going to have erosion. I, I, that I'd like to know for sure. 
That's, that. that's something that's very important because if you put that soil in there and you have erosion again, all that's going into our ocean. We don't need that. Sure. So okay. I don't want to take somebody's word that somebody said it was okay and it's going to work and this is a good idea. I'd like to have an engineer come in here and say, this is why it will work and this is what I'm going to stand behind. Well, my thing is that the staff would have probably said something if they thought that that was an issue. I'm more than... I think it's wonderful that they're willing to supply us with that information because it would be helpful. But Kevin didn't say anything about this, and nor did any other staff. Plus, so it'll be a request and not a well, requirement. Yeah, we'll have Kevin talk to the town engineer and see, you know, what his opinion is. But I, I think between the applicant and our staff, they, we, I think we can work out some better answers to these questions. In terms of Carol, getting Carol to address the r real issue before us which is does she think that there's an adverse impact on coastal resources yes, that's her job, which is right? which we normally what we'd like to get an opinion on that subject yeah. from them because but that's how we she seems reluctant to do that as opposed to previous staff who would frequently tell us whether they thought it was an adverse impact or not that's really the bottom line she has some questions here which what, you know, are, what is her not, what is her responsibility to us I thought, I mean, she reviews coastal site plan applications on our behalf. And lets us know if there's an adverse impact. Or if there's some kind of other questions or other permit. Like, she identifies the fact that there are other permits required here before they can do this work, which is helpful. I mean, we knew that, but... John Goucher usually gave us a it, no it, comment. It used to be. And previously, she would, t you know, do like a zoning analysis, which we told her we, she didn't need to do that. Uh, but we would like to know whether she thinks that this is consistent with coastal management policies. Again, it's up to the commission to decide whether you think it is or not, but it's helpful to have their opinion, especially if they think it is not consistent. But she does ask us if we have any questions. So our question to her is, is, is this consistent? Yes, opinion, exactly. the coastal management policies, right? That's our question. To her. Okay. Perfect. Also, I know there's some people in the audience. If uh, there's any questions at this time, uh, name and address for the record, please. Uh, and, you, you, you actually, can you come up? Only because he can't, right? Yeah, so because the mic can't pick you up. Yeah, well, yeah. just go towards the mic anyway so they can, because the camera's got to be able to pick up your voice. I know. You, you. <laughs> uh, Victor Anatra, 2614 Boston Post Road in Guilford. A uh, couple of questions. What was there before all the erosion? What was on the land itself before the erosion. It was just a little vegetated lawn. Just a lawn that would be cut? Yep. And from what I see here, I think you mentioned it in your, in your presentation, you talked about just putting three inches of material in there just to regrow the grass. Because 127 cub 125 cubic yards is roughly about seven triaxles. And if you spread that over the amount of square footage that you're proposing here, it's about three inches. Well, it, the depth of fill um, depends on the existing grades where it's being placed. So there are areas where there could be eight or nine inches of fill, places where there could be six inches, because areas are already higher or lower. Well, nine and six, according to your figures, there would be an average of three inches. Is it, that it, correct? We didn't do an average. We just used our topography. Well, based on 125 other. cubic feet and 6,000 cubic yards, cubic no, yards rather. It would seem like, uh, I'm just trying to establish, that was a lawn there before, you want to yes. reestablish it as a lawn? Yes. Okay, and then there, from what I hear in the comments here is that the uh, possibility of it blowing out again with erosion is very real because you're just, you're kind of putting it back the way it was and it that's could reoccur not, again. That's not entirely true because we are placing this barrier in between as a sedimentation barrier to the extent that the greatest impractical, it should well, forestall or, that, or, that, or, that erosion. Right, but the erosion would, would go from one point to another point. It won't be just here on the wall. In other words, if you've got water going over, it's going to wash out to the lowest point. And that's where you're going to get ruts and problems and everything else. And I assume that's what you have there, that you need to, to reestablish it. Have you thought about putting certain vegetation in there, like seagrass, that, would, that you wouldn't cut, but that would eventually... Uh, stop erosion? Well, the problem is right now, trying to establish tidal well and vegetation back here is because the tidal inundation is, is frequent enough to create salt, uh, 
content in the soil that causes upland vegetation to erode and die. But the vet at this point, based on the grades back there, it isn't consistent enough to actually allow for the establishment of tidal wetland vegetation. So okay. You couldn't, you can't do that. That's not feasible at this particular time. Well, what type of soil are you putting in there? It's your typical topsoil and loam, presumably. Well, the topsoil and loam, I mean, if you put a different type of material, it would, it would support like a seagrass. No, but again, that would, that would depend on the frequency of tidal inundation and salt content that would be in the soil. And, you know, tidal wetland vegetation typically grows on spongy peat, which you can't just find it, you know, because it only really Well, seagrass grows on sand. It can. And sand it is can, very permeable to, uh, it, not to erode, because the water will go right through sand. It can. I'm just saying that, that could be a possible solution to the problem. And, and uh, Just based on what's happening now, though, we've looked at it, and it isn't feasible at, at this time for, to have anything established there. All right. That's my comments. All right. Thank so, you. Mr. Natra, I know you have a deep knowledge of this. And, and no. No, I know you do, because, you know, I've known you for an awful lot of years. And so I, I don't know how to figure out square footage and depth to how many yards, but you bring up a valid point. If, if by your calculations, and I trust everything that you say, if your calculations say that the average depth over the area that he has drawn there is three inches, and he's talking between six and nine, it's not making sense to me. Well, so, if I may, if I may, this isn't a flat level surface. Right, we I understand. Elevations that change throughout. So there so, are different varying depths of fill based on the existing grades. Right, so when you come back, please, and I'm not saying now because I don't expect you to have it with you now, forgive my ignorance and forgive my not understanding all of the stuff that you're speaking about, but could you show me your calculations on how you came to 165 yards? In other words, if you have a surface area that is 300 square feet, and on average, 165 square yards will make that to a depth of 4.1 inches. That might make sense to me, rather than just saying, well, it's 165 yards, and that's the, the gray area. I, I don't get that. It's hard for me to, I, I don't have his knowledge. Well, the thing is, when we pour concrete, we're pouring a concrete slab, yep. and we have to pour the concrete. Yep. The rule of thumb is that 81 square feet would be a cubic yard if you poured it four inches thick. So if you just take that formula and, and multiply it by the numbers that he's giving here, it averages around three inches over that. See, but that can't be because he's talking between right. six and nine. That's, that's what I'm saying. That, that doesn't make There's got to be something wrong. Victor, are you talking feet or yards? Because he's talking cubic feet. Does it make a difference? No, so cubic yards. yards. Oh, you're one talking one cubic yards. cubic yards. Okay. If you, if you pour it at four inches, it would okay. cover 81 square feet. Yeah. What's your Kevin, suggestion? We have your staff, Kevin. Yeah, um, listen to the tape here, because we're going to have a hard time tr trying to translate all these things into questions. Sure. And have him look at the tape. He'll understand what your questions are and who he thinks he needs to talk to to get the correct answers okay. and come back to the meeting. Hopefully uh, he can come to the meeting on the 15th, which would be the next hearing. Yeah, he hasn't and, been to one in a while. It's about right. the time. Yeah, we, need, we need him here. And he'll, under, he'll be able to listen to all this discussion and be able, to, hopefully, to answer your questions. That's a great idea. He can so, tell us if it's right. a negative impact or... Right. Right. I just want to see if there's anybody else in the audience with a question. Come on up. Very carefully. neighbor, um, just acting as a private citizen, so a couple quick questions. Um, is this an after-the-fact application? Partly, for the retention of the fill up displacements. Can you describe why we're here after the fact, other than the fact that the work was done without permissions being given? I mean, that seems like an it's obvious not question. I'm not sure what you're getting at, though. Oh, well, they're, we're they're, here because they were issued a stop work order for the building place. Um, are you aware of any previous consent orders on the property? Uh, you're talking about state orders? Uh, the same one that you believe, I believe you are under now with the DEP. Uh, yes, they did sign a consent order for the retention, for the mm -hmm. placement of the fill that was, that was placed to retain it and to allow it to be reviewed through a permit, yes. And was there a prior consent order? Yes, there was. And that related to work involving the garage. Okay. Um, and did that work on the garage require any building permits? 
I don't know. We were only, our job is only to uh, acquire the state money. Okay. So I think one of the things, because it certainly sounds this way to me, as if you're going to be coming forward to answer some additional questions. If you could address the prior work that was done under the consent order and whether or not the work that was done under the prior consent order has been signed off on by the town, I think that would be helpful in terms of good faith with respect to the applicant um, making application, doing what they're saying, what they're going to do, and then following through on that. Obviously, we're in a situation now where work was done kind of on the quiet, um, and it was identified that that work shouldn't have been going on. We're here now after the fact for the work that was done and the addition of 125 plus cubic yards of material. Um, to, to talk about Rich's point, the water has to go somewhere. And it might not be that much, but it might be just enough to affect someone else's property. So the balancing is, do we want someone to have a lawn where it might not be there now, or do we want someone else to be negatively impacted? I don't know the answer to that. I know it just, it's got to go somewhere. So if you can come back with answers on the first consent order and the work that was done, and then where we go from here, uh, and whether or not there are any negative impacts on neighbors, because I think that's probably in the marsh. I mean, right. this, that's what we've been addressing. Right. I understand that. And uh, in full disclosure, I actually lived in the house from 1990 to 1992. Mm -hmm. So I understand how high that water can get, and it's not just up, down a little. It can be quite high. It's in a VE flood zone. Um, and it's subject to wave action. So even bringing it up to the level that you're talking about, it's going to get flooded. So I think if you can address that. Right. With we, don't, we, don't, we certainly don't stipulate that there would be no flooding on the property. It right. would be just tidal flooding. And this is the, typically what they see for tidal flooding. Is in, this point, in, in that photograph, that's typically the extent of tidal flooding as it permeates through the face of the bulkhead. Well, you can see it's not, it's, not, it's not much. It's not to the point where it would exceed the capacity of the area to attenuate the amount, the, amount of, the amount of water and cause it to be redirected elsewhere. You can see it's... Well, if you'd like, um, and maybe you, you don't like, I'm happy to send you pictures uh, that document where the water actually comes up to. Bill, could you bring them in anyway? Since he introduced this picture, sure. it would be fair if you brought in those pictures just so it would be sure. fairly presented. <coughs> Same and size, you said, same format. <laughs> and you I'm said, gonna bring a big display screen. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna get some of those addressed by Kevin and okay. Carol as well. Sure. Some of Could your you questions. also be clear uh, you said you wanted them to show where they signed off on town work. What does that mean? Well when make sure it has something to do with this commission though. And sure we can well, actually just, remember that this commission this commission approved the work that was done on the property under the prior consent order. Right. And during that process, permits were taken out for the work. And at this point, to the best of my knowledge, we have no understanding as to whether or not that work was completed, was certified by an engineer, is safe uh, for both the homeowner, for the people that are living at the house, because it's not the homeowner, um, and the abutting neighbors. But Phil, does that have anything to do with this? Well, is a it, 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 it goes to whether or not. It's, it's a pattern of behavior, and I think it's pertinent. So for our, for our approval of right. this CAM up, it's not a special permit, unfortunately. It's right. The way that it works is we have 27391 has one, or E1, A through C, are basically the way that we can either approve or disapprove. And part of it doesn't go to sort of the... Fire act. Yeah, they, any sort of. Um, I see where you're going. What if? Sure, I got you. But absolutely, if there are some responsibilities on the town side that they're not following through with, then you know you can follow up with. I don't think Coastline Consulting and Development had anything to do with that not previous not work. So, in fact, I think what you're asking is that he ask his client to perhaps address the question, and I think we can do that also with Reggie and the building official, the status of the previous. Project, if you want us to, if you want us to address that, I, I don't think we can do that right now. Well, I don't think um, that's not the application, but I think right. that's absolutely something that they can do. Okay. Yeah, think could you do that? We can do that, I think. And I'll be here for the next meeting. And I guess the, the last point I would make is that I, I don't think, think we should really be deferential to the authority of the state. 
because the CJL is a lot more sensitive than that area outside of the CJL. Right. And so if we go approving something that they then don't approve, I think it puts us in a bit well, of a Well, if we approve and they don't approve it, it can't be done. Right. And that's the work starts. Right. Yeah. I mean, Phil, the bottom line is if this has a negative impact on the overall community, it should be declined. So we've got to hear from, we got to hear from Carol, yeah, and we have to hear exactly. from Kevin, and if they say that it actually has a better uh, impact on, this, on the site, then we would probably approve it. I if they say think that if it's it a, has a, positive a worse impact, impact I think you should. then they're going to, well, then we probably. Criteria for coastal site plan applications. Does it conform to the zoning code, and is it consistent with coastal management policies oh. of the state? Uh, it's always nice to get an opinion from the state as to whether they think it is consistent or not. Uh, but even if we don't get one, that's still your finding. You have to make that finding to in order to prove it. It's got to be beneficial to the coastal area and not. It be just has to be consistent with the coastal management well, policies of the state. Well, that's pretty. So that might be it says con consider the. Uh, we, we're required to consider the potential effects of both beneficial and adverse of the proposed activity on coastal resources and future wave dependent development opportunities. So that's just part of our We need some consideration. more opinions. I mean, some more comments. I think comments Kevin's from probably staff. the best person to try yeah, to address definitely. all this for us. But in terms of answering questions of app other applications, I don't necessarily know if the Planning and Zoning Commission as a body right now has any sort of Reason, uh, has any ability to recall an applicant to say we want to know what the status is of this? No, and I don't think we are going to. But do I that. absolutely think that the zoning officer and the you know can do whatever she needs to do to s make sure that they're complying with our application. We'll we'll report the status of to the best of our ability. Thank uh, you. I may. Um, we did prepare the state application to retain the work done to the garage. Um, so there was no additional work done following that. It was to retain work that had been done. Okay. Is there any other questions <clears throat> at this point? I have a, just one. Yeah, please. Uh, maybe for next time, I'd just like to have a better idea of the rate of the difference in the percentage of the rate of erosion as uh, if, if you're not going to have the, if we're not going to do this project as opposed to if we are going to do the project, what, what the difference in the rate of erosion, the percentage of the rate of erosion would be. <laughs> So we can do our yeah. best to address that. Um, mm -hmm. Just to like, <clears throat> just to get a better idea of the whole scope of the project, and also just to clarify that you intend to use the same type of soil that's there now. We intend to use typical upland soil, so loam, topsoil, whatever's necessary for upland grasses to grow. Yep. That's there now. Yep. Perfect. Any other questions right now? You want to make a continuation? I'll move to continue this to the uh, November 15th hearing. Are we okay with that? Are you okay with that? Uh, November 15th? Yeah. Do you uh, have a problem with that? I mean, we can do our best to provide the engineering report. I can't guarantee well, if we can have the engineering report that you're asking for you in like two weeks. Would you like to take it to December hearing instead? Um, I, I, or would you, you want to get this resolved as... I would assume the applicant wants to get this resolved as soon as possible. We can do well, our you best could always to try to You could always inform us that you need to continue. We'll schedule for the 15th for now, and if you need to continue, just let us know. Sure. Sure. Okay. And I got a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Okay. Thank you. Okay, guys. Number three. John? It's continued. No, continued. Okay, so we got a regular meeting. Can I get an approval of the revised agenda? So uh, moved. Second. Okay. I'll move no. to continue, John. Oh, yep. Tardis to 12. Sorry. Yeah. Second. I move to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Do that again, Rich. To I make a motion to approve the revised agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, let's see. Deliberation. Oh, yeah. There's we a have Brian. I'll make a motion. Gogowski. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a special permit for Brian Gogowski for an accessory apartment at 2641 Long Hill Road, uh, Map 104, Lot 13A, as shown on application dated 9-13-17. This application is approved based upon finding that it conforms with the zoning code. The special permit is effective on November 10, 2017, and upon filing with the town clerk. Um, Second. Does it matter that it's not on my agenda? 
it just, they didn't Mikowski. miss the deliberation of the public hearing, but this was the second oh. public hearing, so. Yeah, ordinarily in the special permits they listed, but that's cool, I guess. Okay. So did someone second it? Yep. Rich seconded it. Perfect. I think it's a very straightforward application. Yeah. And there were no neighbors that complained. Yeah. Nope. Uh, Mr. Bogoski has a lot of property there. It goes back quite a ways. Okay. Looks everything checked off the boxes that we needed to check off. Made sense? Everybody? Anybody? Any, any more discussion? I'm good. Call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Let's go on to the applications. We've got some special permits. Brian, Brian Weedy, yeah, Brian you want to read it? Uh, 97 Vineyard Point Road, map 9, lot 1A, zone R5, special permit accessory permit, a new 1,176 1, square foot accessory structure, section 273.19, receiving sub clearing date for November 15th, and to be continued to December 6th for the mandatory second public hearing. Is that a motion? That is a motion. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 New Haven Sportsman's Club, uh, 4158 Durham Road, Map 122, Lot 1, Zone R8. Special permit for installation of a 288 square foot storage shed, 273-19. Receives at a public hearing date of December 6 to be continued December 20 for mandatory second public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Site plans. Uh, we receive and take action. This we need receive and take action. Guilford Gatehouse West Management, LLC. Is anybody here for that? Come on up. Got some letters too. Just one. Do I have to identify myself again? Please, Please do. Okay, Victor Anandra, 2614 Boston Post Road, Guilford, Connecticut. Uh, basically, the Guilford Gatehouse West, uh, the office, and it's it's actually a mixed use residential and office compl complex. We originally uh, uh, started this project in 1999, and it was, was approved as a mixed-use uh, property. When we, uh, when we started to build it, we, we were approved for four residential units in there, and uh, when we started to build it, we eliminated two of them. But we didn't, it didn't affect the septic or anything else. We just decided to eliminate two of them just to have more parking. Uh, in the area. So uh, what we're proposing is to uh, take two areas in the, in the gatehouse, the east, second floor of the east side and the second floor of the west side. Each of them have approximately 2,500 square feet to each side. We want to convert that office space into residential use. And that's, ba that's basically it. There's a letter here from Dennis Johnson. Did you yes. see it? You saw it? I didn't see the letter, but I did speak with Dennis. The applicant's dated today. The applicant's proposed change in use from office space to residential will not affect the septic system discharge capacity. The original sanitary design for the building uh, incorporated the applicant's proposed new residential units, which were built into existing septic systems during construction. It is recommended that the applicant's proposed change in use be permitted. And parking is not an issue at all for the site? Right, great. Actually, the parking gets reduced for residential use yep. because of office use. So it's, it's so better use. more space now. Questions? Anybody else? Matt, anything you see? How, how big are these going to be? 2,500 square feet? Rich? Thanks. I have no questions. You got a motion. All right. Voted that the Guilford Planning and Zoning Commission approve a site plan revision for a change of use from office to residential for Guilford Gatehouse West Management LRC at 2614 Boston Post Road, Map 83, Lot 20, as shown on an application dated 10 27 I'll second. Okay. The application is approved based on it, finds it conforms with the zoning code. Right. Can I second? No, I'll second it. That's it. All right, so uh, any discussion? Straightforward. Yep. All in favor? Aye. And thank you for sharing your knowledge with me. I appreciate it. Um, two big volumes. We have one more cam. Uh, Myron Weiss, 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 Weiss. Weiss. Please read it. 117 Andrews Road, Map 12, Lot 76B, Zone R5, Coastal Area Management, uh, to install a solar array to reduce offset re residential energy consumption. Section 273-91, receiving set public hearing for December 6th. Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 
All right, we have some uh, approval of the minutes. Matt, Matt read through the minutes. Matt has some. Okay. No, you got it. It's good. 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 So they look good to me. I make a motion to approve them. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Anybody have to abstain? Everybody was here, right, last time? I was. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Somebody. In as much as there's nothing else before us, I make a motion to close the meeting. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Happy November. Congratulations. Wish we had some to Reggie. Yeah, Is there some hey. congratulations in order? Thank you. Even though it seemed like it was a secret. What happened? Well, none of us I missed know. out on it. Yeah, it was like, we're not a left, you don't know? No, I don't know.